The human heart is an amazing organ, but at its core, it's really a pump. It's gonna pump low oxygen blood through the pulmonary artery to get oxygen from the lungs. It's gonna pump high oxygen blood through the aorta to deliver that oxygen and other nutrients throughout the body. But what about the heart muscle itself? How do we get that high oxygen blood into the heart muscle so that our heart muscle is healthy and can continue pumping throughout the rest of our life? Well, that blood makes it into the heart muscle through our coronary arteries, these little arteries that branch off from the aorta and travel throughout that heart muscle. So in this video, we're gonna learn each of the coronary arteries one at a time so you can learn them really, really well. And to visualize this three-dimensionally, we're gonna look at cadaveric images from Anatomage, the maker of the world's first life-size virtual dissection table. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a chance to practice so that you have all of these coronary arteries memorized. Let's jump to the whiteboard and get started. So let's start with an outline of the human heart and we're gonna add on the superior and inferior vena cavas. We're gonna add on the aorta and then add on the pulmonary arteries. I'm also gonna draw the auricles of the heart. Another thing we can see on the outside of the heart is the epicardial fat. Now that term epicardial, epi means outside or above, and then cardio means the heart, of course. So it's just fat that's found on the outside of the heart. And if you look at the location of it or the shape of it, it kind of looks like it branches off from itself in a bunch of spots. That's because this is really gonna follow the same line as the coronary arteries that we're about to draw. The epicardial fat is gonna act as sort of a cushion or protection for those coronary arteries. Fat's a little bit more cushiony than muscle is. And they can also act as a source of nutrients for those coronary arteries when needed. The other really cool thing about this epicardial fat or these coronary arteries that are gonna be lining the epicardial fat is that you can use them to visually determine where the different chambers of the heart are just by looking on the outside of the heart. So for example, the coronary artery that runs through here is gonna separate the right atrium from the right ventricle. We've got the coronary artery running through here, which will separate the two ventricles from each other. And we've got this coronary artery, which would separate the left atrium from the left ventricle. And to prove it to you, let me put another diagram kind of underneath that, which shows the chambers of the heart. And you can see, I didn't move the labels at all, and those line up exactly with where those chambers of the heart are. All right, finally, let's get to the actual coronary arteries themselves. Let me remove the auricles for a second, and then I'm gonna show you what this diagram's ultimately gonna look like with all of the coronary arteries drawn in. It's gonna be kind of overwhelming at first there. There's a lot of arteries going on, but I wanted to show you real quick kind of a picture of where we're going with this. We've got two arteries kind of coming off of it. We've got them wrapping around to the back side of the heart, and we've got this left coronary artery that's gonna have a couple branches, wrapping around to the back side of the heart as well. And then three-dimensionally, what does it look like? Here's our cadaveric images from anatomage, so you can see what that's gonna look like ultimately once we've had all those coronary arteries added in. First, let's talk about the name coronary artery. Coronary just means crown, and so it's kind of like the these coronary arteries form what looks sort of like a crown around the heart, right? It kind of wraps around the side here, it's gonna wrap around the side right there, forming a crown of sorts. So that's where it gets its name from. It's just based on the Latin word for crown. So let's draw in our coronary arteries. The first one that we have is the right coronary artery. We can see it branching off of the aorta, the base of the aorta right there. It's gonna bring blood down here, descending down to the bottom of the heart, and then it's gonna go back to the posterior side of the heart down there. This view that we're looking at right here is an anterior view. So it's kind of like, imagine this is my heart and you're looking directly at me. That's what you're looking at in this diagram. It's the anterior or the front side of the heart. And that right coronary artery, of course, is gonna separate the right atrium from the right ventricle, at least visually on the outside of the heart. And here we can see it in our clip from Anatomage. You can see three-dimensionally where that right coronary artery is. And you can see it separating the right atrium from the right ventricle right there. Our next coronary artery is gonna be the left coronary artery. It's also gonna branch off of the base of the aorta right there. And you'll notice I drew it in pretty small because it's gonna immediately branch off into two other arteries. So when we, when we label the left coronary artery, it's just a small little section before it branches. Here we can see that three-dimensionally from anatomage. There is the left coronary artery. Now the two branches of the left coronary artery, the first is gonna be the left anterior descending artery. And the name right there kind of tells us everything about it. The left here means it's gonna be a branch of the left coronary artery. It doesn't mean exactly that it's on the left side, but the left there means it's a branch of the left coronary artery. Anterior, because it's on the anterior or front surface of the heart. And descending, because it's taking blood from the top or superior side of the heart down to the bottom or inferior side of the heart. That left anterior descending artery is also known as the anterior interventricular artery. Anterior Anterior against on the anterior surface, interventricular because it's separating the right ventricle from the left ventricle. But in this video, I'm mainly going to call it the left anterior descending or the LAD. And here we can see that left anterior descending artery in our clip from anatomage. There's the right ventricle, and then here's the left ventricle, and it's separating those two. All right, the other branch of the left coronary artery is going to be the circumflex artery. That word circumflex, if you think the beginning of it, circa, just like circle, 
it's going to circle around the side of the heart. It's really going to wrap around to that posterior side of the heart right there. So that's the circumflex artery. All right, and here's our cadaveric images from Anatomage. You can see that circumflex artery, which is separating the left atrium from the left ventricle right there. Now we've got four arteries drawn on here, but there's three that I kind of think about in my brain when I organize all of this. And that's gonna be the right coronary artery, the left anterior descending artery, and the circumflex artery. And that's because those three are the ones that visually separate the atria and the ventricles from each other. Everything else we look at is gonna be branches of one of those three arteries that we've already labeled. Now let's go back to our right coronary artery and look at the branches of that. First, I'm gonna draw a couple branches right here that are gonna go up kind of to the atrium. Now I'm not gonna label all of the different branches on here, and there's a couple reasons for that. First, most diagrams that you might need to know for a class or when you're learning this stuff are just gonna include some of the main branches. The second, a lot of the branches, the really tiny ones that I draw on here, are really gonna vary person to person. Not everybody has the same kind of map of their coronary arteries. The ones that I label though are gonna be the ones that are pretty consistent across the board from person to person. But there will be some coronary artery branches here that are going up to the right atrium. And then we've got some that are gonna go down to the right ventricle. I've got three drawn right here. Usually at the top, there's one called the conus artery. There might be one or two right here called the ventricular arteries. But the only one that's consistently labeled on diagrams is gonna be this pretty important branch right here which is gonna be the right marginal artery, or also known as the acute artery. The right marginal artery is gonna branch off the right coronary artery. It's kind of near the base of the heart, but not on the posterior side, it's still on the anterior side. And it's gonna run down here, kind of towards this left anterior descending, but not reach all the way down to it. So that's the right marginal acute artery. We're gonna have a left marginal obtuse artery on the other side later on. But for now, just know the right marginal acute artery right there. And here in our 3D cadaveric images, we can see the right marginal acute artery, which is branching off of that right coronary artery and taking blood down into that right ventricle. So we're gonna jump over to the left anterior descending. We've got a couple branches right here, which are gonna be the septal branches. If you can imagine the, the heart layout here, we've got the septum, which runs through right here, separating the two ventricles. And these branches are gonna go down into that septum, so we call them the septal branches. And we have a few branches that go down to the left ventricle right here. We call those the diagonal arteries or the left diagonal branches of the left anterior descending artery. They get referred to as like D1 and this would be D2 and there can be some variance into how many of those are branching out of there. But those are the diagonal arteries. I assume they were called that because they're sort of diagonal but also a lot of arteries are. So I just kind of remember left anterior descending starts with D for diagonal. And here three-dimensionally, we can see the left diagonal arteries, which are branching off the left anterior descending artery and bringing blood into the left ventricle. And then next, let's look at our circumflex artery. And so we've got a couple tiny branches going up to the left atrium right there. All the rest of our branches on here, we need to look at the posterior side. So let's make this a little bit transparent there so we can see kind of behind this. Let's go back to our right coronary artery and I'm gonna add in the rest of that. You'll see it kind of wraps around the back or posterior side of the heart right here. And then there's this branch that continues down this way. It's sort of like approaching where the left anterior descending artery is gonna end. This is gonna be called the posterior descending artery, which makes a lot of sense, right? We had the anterior descending artery. We got the same thing here, and this is on the posterior side. It's descending because it's heading down towards the bottom or the apex of the heart right here, and it's on the posterior side. But it's really a continuation of that right coronary artery, and it kind of just makes a turn right here on the posterior side. Now, just like the left anterior descending artery, it had a second name. This one has a second name as well, which is the posterior interventricular artery. So it's another artery that's gonna separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle, but it's gonna be on the posterior side. So posterior interventricular artery is another name for the posterior descending artery. And here in our three-dimensional posterior view, we can see the posterior descending artery, which will separate the right and left ventricles, but on the posterior side. And remember, that's a branch of the right coronary artery. Back over to the LAD right here. I'm gonna just continue it off right there. You can see where that kind of ends. And then finally, let's continue our circumflex artery to the posterior side of the heart. And you can see it wraps around right there. And it's gonna kind of come over to here. It's kind of come close to another branch of the right coronary artery right there. And we've got a couple branches that are gonna come off of the circumflex artery. And those are gonna be the left marginal obtuse arteries. And so those might be labeled M1, and M2, and if there's a third branch, it would be M3. So that circumflex artery, it's gonna wrap around the heart, 
and the main branch coming off of that is gonna be the left marginal obtuse arteries, and there's gonna be usually gonna be a couple of those. And here three-dimensionally, we have the left marginal or obtuse arteries. There's gonna be branching off of the circumflex artery on the posterior side of the heart. Now there's one more artery I'm gonna add on to here that's not included in every diagram, but I think it's a pretty important one. And that's gonna be the sinoatrial nodal artery. It's named that because it's gonna be sending blood to the sinoatrial node, which is the pacemaker of the heart that's sending the electrical signals down throughout the heart. I've got another video on that if you wanna learn about electrical conductivity of the heart. But this sinoatrial nodal artery, it's gonna branch off of the right coronary artery right here. It's gonna kind of wrap around the back of the heart over to this side right there. That's gonna bring blood to that sinoatrial node. Now, a pretty interesting thing about this artery is that the way that I have it drawn, where it branches off the right coronary artery, that's only how it's located in about 60% of people. In the other, approximately 40% of people, it actually comes off of the circumflex artery back here and it'll wrap up around the back of the heart like this. So this is a good artery to kind of illustrate this idea that not everybody has the same layout of coronary arteries. All of the other arteries that I drew are pretty consistent among different people, but some arteries, like the sinoatrial nodal artery, are gonna be present like that in some percentage of people, but then located in a different spot for another percentage of people. And that's one reason why we're not labeling every single artery on here, because it really will vary from person to person somewhat. Now, one of the main reasons that these arteries are all so important to know is because whenever an artery gets blocked, we have something called a myocardial infarction. We can break that word down. Myo means muscle, cardio means heart. Infarction is from a Latin word that means to block something or to plug something up. So this is gonna be a blockage that causes damage to the muscle of your heart, or in other words, known as a heart attack. In a heart attack, it's gonna be blocking the blood flow to the heart muscle. What is bringing the blood to the heart muscle? Well, that's the coronary arteries. And if those get blocked, suddenly there's gonna be big sections of the muscle of the heart that's not getting blood. And if any tissue in the body doesn't get blood flow to it, well, it starts to die. So let's take a look at a couple examples of what that could look like. Now, if we had a blockage right here in one of our main coronary arteries, basically any section of the muscle that's downstream from that it's suddenly not gonna be getting blood. So anything like in these branches, these branches and so forth, no blood is gonna be flowing to those areas. And so you can see that everything downstream from that blockage, all of this section right there, the muscle is gonna start to die off. And so a blockage right here would be a very serious heart attack, potentially fatal heart attack, because there's a large section of the heart that's no longer able to keep pumping because it's not getting a source of oxygen from the coronary artery. Now you can also have more minor heart attacks and so a more minor heart attack is usually gonna be the blockage of a smaller branch of a coronary artery. So here's an example right there. I've added in a blockage right there in one of the diagonal branches of the left anterior descending artery. And so if you had a blockage right there, it might cause this section of the heart muscle to start to die off. So a bigger blockage in a section like this would be a more major heart attack. And then a blockage in a smaller branch is gonna be a slightly less serious or less likely to be fatal type of heart attack. And here in our clips from Anatomage, we can see a couple examples of myocardial infarction. This first one is an example of a blockage of the left anterior descending artery, so a major blockage. You can see all of the heart muscle kind of in that darker red or blackish color right there. And then a more minor heart attack, we can see this one. So you can see it's a much smaller section of the heart muscle that's being damaged from that heart attack. So now I'm gonna take all these arteries in this kind of complicated diagram, and I'm gonna to try to simplify it down a little bit by making a little flow chart of all these arteries. This is actually a really good study strategy, is to take something in a diagram like this and then represent it in some other form. So it could be a good point if you're really trying to learn this to pause the video and try it yourself, but I'm gonna run through how I kind of think about how these arteries are organized. First, we have the right coronary artery, which we drew right in here. And we've got a branch coming off of that, which is the right marginal acute artery. Then we have another branch of that, which is gonna be that posterior descending artery. Now on the left side, we've got the left coronary artery. And of course, it's gonna branch into the left anterior descending artery. And then off of the left anterior descending artery, we've got the left diagonal arteries. The other branch of the left coronary artery is gonna be the circumflex artery. And that circumflex artery has an important branch coming off of it which is called the left marginal or obtuse artery. So that's one really good way to practice this. Start with this diagram, see if you can draw it out like this, or start with a flow chart like this and see if you can map out those arteries on the heart. Now I wanna give you a chance to practice labeling all of these on the heart itself. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can identify all of the arteries that we learned in the heart. And then here are those arteries back so you can see how you did. Now for a final challenge, doing this on my two-dimensional diagram that we just spent a lot of time with is one thing, but if you can do it three-dimensionally, then you know it even better. So here's our cadaveric image from Anatomage with all of the labels. Now I'm gonna cover up all of those labels 
pause the video, can you name all of those arteries based off of our image from Anatomage? And then here are those arteries back so you can check and see how you did. And finally, I just wanna say thank you to Anatomage for sponsoring this video. We've been using Anatomage's cadaveric images throughout the video, meaning that every three-dimensional image that you've seen is taken from an actual cadaver. And so we're really seeing what the human body looks like, not just an idealized diagram of it. So thank you to Anatomage. You can check out more about them in the link in the description below. By the way, when you're learning stuff in anatomy, I highly recommend that you use different diagrams. Don't just use my diagrams, use three-dimensional diagrams, use other diagrams that you find online. Because if you just use one diagram to learn the topic, then you're only really learning that diagram. You're not learning other ways that it might be represented or other views of that structure. So use different diagrams. That's one of the strategies that I talk about in my free A&P survival guide. If you're interested in that, check out the link below for that. I'm also creating a course called the a Memory Lab where I'm gonna help you build a study system for anatomy and physiology so that you're able to walk into those exams with confidence um, and learn a &P way more efficiently and effectively than you might be learning right now. And I've got some other resources like comprehensive guides and study cards and stuff. So check all that out in the descriptions below. Thank you for watching this video and for learning about the coronary arteries and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.